every now and then. Okay. Do you need anything? I'm gonna bring your lasagna. I should probably bring something to set that on. Oh, yeah. here we go. We'll do this. Okay. Is that your cue for me to grab it for you? No, I'm just trying to figure. Maybe that's good. I meant resting it on that. Cause look at the height. Oh, ow! Maybe it just should I almost dislocated my knee. We should probably close that. Just look how dark it is with the better. Is that better? Yes. Very much so. Oh, I need my. Where's that move? Uh I don't think we should have the dogs in here. All right, friends. We are going to try to wrap some gifts during this live. I don't know how that's going to go, actually. But that is kind of the plan. Maybe I'll put you on the side. What do we think? Is that a little better? Lou, I need your advice on where to put it. Okay, hold on. Okay. What pan thing? Oh, there we go. That might be okay. What do you think, Oso? Oso's over it. Oso is? Yeah. Where's my phone? Is my phone in there? Yeah. Yeah. So, hi little boy. You know those little cookies that you gave me? These ones? Yeah. I loved those so much and so did my cats. They ripped into the bag. Oh, uh, well, grandma made Can them I in. Close the door? Yeah, and she kept talking about, I'm going to go get my little on. And she uh, kept talking about. Oh my about, god, I forgot. I'm so sorry. Okay, help me figure that out. Hi. Figure what out? What's wrong with it? Oh, Ow. there we go. Okay, hi. Hey, that works pretty good. We are going to. I stole some cookies. I'm gonna go grab my lasagna. Is that a couple? No. Oh, I need to pull up TikTok on my phone. Okay. Hello, friends. Hi, guys. Hello. Oh, boxer mom times two. Do you have boxers? <gasps> well, I used to have a boxer. Did you get me milk? Oh no, now I'm stuck on TikTok. No. How long? Seven minutes. Okay. Okay, guys. Oh, so you have to get out here. Oh my god. What? It's this TikTok. Come on, puppies. Oh, so come on out. Push Oso. Oh my god. Come on, baby. Come on out. Come on out. Go. Oh, so out. There you go. Good boy. Go on, Bubba. <laughs> oh, Bell Bell's staying in here. <laughs> Poor Oso. <laughs> that is so incredibly mean. Oh my god. I your big leg. I would have wrapped right there. Anyway. All right, my friends. Oh, I've seen that before. You have? Yeah. That's crazy. So, I message my friend. I just would like to start off by saying, I don't know if anybody's here, but here's the thing. I never I never know how to tell. Um we're making pasta with lots of butter. I hope you brought a snack yesterday. Oh, that made me so excited. I thought the pasta was already ready. <laughs> yeah, you said well, we were having pasta. Timer. I know. But also yesterday we were at Target in the frozen food section. and I Literally get, at like 9.40 at night. And I get excited because Target has a lot of really good dairy-free foods. And so mm. I got this like dairy-free lasagna. But it's literally like, 
Look at that. How oh, is it? It's pretty good. I don't know. I haven't taken a bite yet. Oh. I was a little worried, but then like, you can actually see the layers, so not bad. Hmm. I don't know. Let's see. Not going to lie. I'm a little nervous. No, it's hot. Look at Bubba. Oh, my God. Mm. Ow. It's actually really good. Oh, my gosh. It is pretty good. We have five viewers. Mmm. It is yummy. Is it? Guys, it's vegan lasagna. Is it good? Try it. Is it hot? I'm, I'm literally your mother. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my friends. So today's live is going to be a little mm. a little short because we're going to get our booster shots in how long? Ow. An hour and like 15 minutes. It's really hot. Abby said, really hey, how are you guys? That sounds good. It is really good. We're actually, I'm actually really good. I went to a, a, a Taekwondo party today. But instead of Taekwondo, really they take paddle ball. I was so confused when I walked in. I was like, is this what Taekwondo is now? Okay. The first thing we have to do is get our bags ready for stocking. So, although I can't find your stocking. We have me and Emma's. Probably at my house. Okay, there's one. We need to put someone's name on that. Why? I don't have a pen. Because. Who's one of your eyeliners? Oh. 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 Anywho, if you've just joined, please grab a snack. Right now I'm having lasagna. And Is this for? I'm having lasagna <laughs> followed by pasta and butter. <laughs> um, that can be yours. Okay. Here could be her Eva stocking stuff. I don't want the same as Eva. Then you can I'm make just, a mine. Just kidding. Oh my gosh, look at this cute little bag. That is really cute. Okay, make that be. Ooh, someone I said know. I made falafel for the first time today. I love falafel. Oh my goodness, I am. <laughs> Who's this? Number one, I'm so I'm proud of more. you. That's amazing. It's really good, isn't it? It is really good. And we're going to have to find something to put behind. Look at both our phones are propped up by water bottles, but what happens when we need a drink? I take my own off, but you can't share with me, so. <laughs> and, and then here's another one. And they said I made a sauce with yogurt, which is a favorite. <gasps> oh, I'm so glad. Yay. Because honestly, like you have to have that sauce. What even is a falafel without that sauce? I'm telling you. Some stuff. Mm -hmm. when I me or you or Papa or there's four of us so whatever oh like honestly when I was really sick some things I didn't eat just because it was like if I can't have the sauce with it was even a point and I couldn't eat the sauce and then I didn't eat the food and then it was just like ridiculous you're just gonna be ma mama I don't know how to spell that okay and then we can pop those like up oh, there hi, then we'll just put some stuff in them maybe okay. and then we'll wrap also as we go because right. I want to get this wrapped. Guys, this is what one of the things my nephew wanted for Christmas. Or could you not? He's the communist. Mm -hmm. He I'm wanted. Eat, like, all of this. He's only 11. That's okay. We're going to have him more. Okay. Um, a literal <laughs> gas, <laughs> gas mask. That's what he asked for for Christmas. I don't know how he's going to get over his big old head. Yeah, that's what But it only tough. comes in like one size. But Papa said it really has to suction to your head, but it's like a real one. So If it has to suction to your head, that would make me so okay, anxious. Grab me one of those boxes. Thank you. Right, so you um, I like how on. I asked Lou to grab me a box, and she hands me. She just pulls all the boxes in my direction. Hey. Someone said, or Abby, the one who made the falafel in the sauce, said... Um, thank you, me too. I think I have a new thing in my rotation. Oh my gosh, yay! And then they said, yes, it's such a runaround. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Atlanta said, hey mom, how do you feel after all this long way of recovery? I feel like my dog is going bananas behind me. He's digging a hole. <laughs> He's I like how I misgender hole. everyone. Literally. I literally just misgendered my own dog. Um, <laughs> I thought your, I, dog, it your feels... dog was gender fluid. True. It feels very finally worth it like it takes so long to recover like i don't know what i'm doing here i'm lacing this and it just feels what i don't know what i'm doing anyway it just feels so bad 
for oh. so long in recovery that like here we'll use this dry one. There we go. <laughs> it feels so wrong for so long when you're recovering. It is horrible. Everything is wrong. Everything is bad. Everything hurts. No. The blow. The painful. Like, and you think it's never gonna end. I thought it would never end. I can remember asking my dietitian. Show me someone that's recovered because I don't believe you. Whoa, what the? Whoop, whoop. What is that even for? The noodles. Oh. It's okay, I'll go get them. Yeah. So How anyway, do you do now, a medium amount of butter? Like, I don't know. Is there a, I don't want it swimming. Well, like, how many tablespoons, I guess? Oh, my God. I don't know. Like, this much? This much? Just do what you would do for you. I do a lot. Oh. Okay. Well, I'm, then. like, closer to Papa. Okay. Well, whatever. <laughs> I'm fine with that. Okay. I won't, I won't let you swim Which is, it. I guess, like, one of the super wonderful things about recovering, right? I mean, there's, like, a moment right there. Lisa said, how much butter do you want? And she even used a term, a tablespoon. <laughs> they. They. <laughs> but honestly, like, I don't even care how much butter's in it. If there's too much butter in it, I will survive. It will be okay. I'm not going to gain 17 pounds. And thank goodness I don't have a scale anymore that I got rid of my scale. Because honestly, if I would have had a scale... And I would have eaten a little bit. I would have jumped right on that scale to see how much I weighed. Brutal. But it feels really good to be here. And um, sometimes I look at my body and I'm not a big fan. What was I, my goal to be in a big body? I mean, sometimes I wear shirts and they're actually uncomfortable on my fat rolls. But you know what? I have to stop and remind myself. It's that or an eating disorder. Like, I don't have a choice. It's not like I can go on a diet and lose a few pounds. It's not like I get to choose my size. Our set points are our set points. And there's no, like, there's no choosing that. Just like I didn't get to choose my height, right? We don't get to choose our height. We don't get to choose our eye color. We also don't get to choose our weight unless we want an eating disorder or to like if we don't have an eating disorder genetic component then we just have to diet our whole lives and then if we do have an eating disorder component guess what we have an eating disorder and I would rather live in a bigger body without that and it is wonderful it is and I think about that too when I look at myself and I see my fat rolls or if I'm at work and I realize a shirt just isn't feeling right it's not comfortable because it's kind of like forming around it Number one, I won't wear that shirt again. But number two, I just remind myself that it's so freeing to be able to like eat a little tray of lasagna and then turn around and eat buttery noodles that Lou put butter on that I don't even know how much butter are going on them. I mean, just so much freedom. Let me see if I can look at this. All right. And I love falafel. Oh, my goodness. I went to Amsterdam once and had falafel on one of those falafel carts. Oh, with all the veggies and the sauce all over it. Oh, my goodness. And I'm a sauce person. I have to have so much sauce. All right. Today is the first day. I'm not going to calorie count in the first time for a long time. I am so excited for you. I can remember when I stopped calorie counting. I mean, let me rephrase that because I stopped calorie counting, but your brain still calorie counts, right? I mean, it's not like you can just like, it's not like you can just stop calorie counting. You can stop it. You can stop actually forcing yourself to calorie count, but your brain is still going to, I mean, my brain anyway, calories were ingrained in there. They were like part of my soul. So my brain would literally, without my knowledge, be just going like 250, 300, 350, 356, 361. Like, oh my goodness. It was insanity. Uh oh, I think my tape's out there. Normally I would scream into the other room for Lou, but I'm going to be polite and not do that in front of you guys. Yes, I am, because I really want it. Hey, Lou. Hey, I found some. Never mind. We're, we're all Gucci. 
So anyway, I'm so proud you're going to try to not calorie count. That's amazing. Please don't get frustrated. Also, so sad sitting out here. Oh, he's here literally he sitting right now. He's getting look. He's literally going to be on my gift. Out. Okay, here come both out. Get out, out. Also out. Also, don't worry, Bubba's going out too. Go, also. Come on, Bubba. Look at her. Here, She's like. Me. Billy's like, I never have to go. Ooh, that looks today. so good. <laughs> Bell, come on. Oh, we kind of had like a thing over what kind of noodles oh, to get. Oh, did you want any rolls? This is good. Okay. Mm. There's so much butter. I was okay. So, when I first started trying to not calorie count, I just please don't get discouraged when it doesn't happen overnight. It took years for you to learn all those calories. It took years. It's going to take a long time for those to go out of your brain. I remember thinking, I'm going to know the calories in peanut butter and mayonnaise and noodles forever. I am. And here I am. I think, what is it, three years later? I do not know how many calories are in these noodles. I mean, I guess I could take some sort of an anorexic guess. And by anorexic guess, I mean hugely high number because we always overestimate calories anyway you know we do and so I could take some sort of like a guess but back then my brain just knew right down to the freaking calorie and the only way to get over that is to stop doing it and stop doing it for a long time because for a long time your brain's just going to do it without you and even when I wasn't doing it during the day, I would get in bed at night and my brain, <laughs> would just, as soon as my head hit the pillow, my brain was like 25, 30, 135, and I'm just on and on. Here comes the, I should have had you get the regular tape because this sucks. Oh, my serious. That's all right. We're, we'll make it work. <laughs> Can you put your noodles literally oh. directly in my spot? <laughs> oh my gosh, look at my bowl. Lou, hold up your bowl. <laughs> Well, I'm at, not as hungry at, as you look are. Look at all these noodles. They can't see in my because I already ate them. Oh, okay. So here's the noodles that we're having. Lots of butter. Sometimes, oh, I just dropped some of your noodles into my bowl. <laughs> <laughs> I should finish this. We what are you at? What question are you at? Um, we just, Mackenzie just said she's, oh, oh, friends, I am going to upload this to um, YouTube after. So um, I'm going to try not to use anybody's name. So. Somebody just is going to stop counting calories today. Mm. I know. Maybe have somebody That's super exciting. black out all the calories on everything in your kitchen. You want this last bite? You can have it. Okay. Um, where mm. where are you with the questions? Your calories. Oh, okay. Mm. Um, Elizabeth said you girls are so amazing and so inspiring. And Honor, Sc Honor Scar said struggling with the fact that I can't recover until I hit my goal weight. Oh. Why? I would get, I would, and we're not saying names. Oh, sorry. I would. <laughs> you literally just said that. I would venture to guess that you've already hit a goal weight and this is not your first goal weight because that's usually how we do it. Also, I'm here to tell you there's a very good possibility that you could die before you hit your goal weight. And hitting your goal weight, what is that going to give you? Happiness? No. Freedom? No. I mean, literally, your goal weight is just a guiding number between you and your eating disorder. That's all it is. It's just, <laughs> it's just how close you are to winning at anorexia. Although the thing is, once you hit that goal weight, you're just going to make another goal weight. So I would encourage you to try to make new oh, goals. I was supposed to do that. Sorry, let me see. That's right. I think I got it. To try to make new goals. So like, I had a hard time because I had a lot of goals around calories. Um, I had goals about goal weight. I had to be medically underweight, you know, like blah, 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 according to the BMI. And then once I hit... Oh, Mom. And then once I hit that goal weight, my next goal weight was to just be lower than the, every time I stepped on the scale, I must be lower. That was my goal weight. Um, 
And so I remember my dietitian telling me, instead of making that these your goals, it's time we make some new goals, especially if you're in recovery. So can our new goals be something a little bit different? Can our new goals be, you know, let's, let's make a goal of eating in a restaurant this week. Scary, I know. Except, I mean, unless you're Lou and then you're not eating in a restaurant anytime soon. Absolutely not. Lou hates restaurants. Let's make a goal of eating falafel three times this week. I don't know. How, no. I know, right? Let's make a goal of, of the next time someone gives you surprise food, you're going to eat it. Right? I love surprise food. I love surprise food now, too. <laughs> Um, so those are some like goals. Food, you don't have to pay for it. I know. But you right? get to feed yourself. I know. So, <laughs> I wonder how you think of it in terms of feeding yourself and money. <laughs> those are the only two things that matter. Yeah, so I get it that you have a goal weight. We all do. There's not a single one of us with anorexia that didn't have goal weights. They're all over pro Anna. I lived on those pro Anna sites. And even if you don't have any disorder, I feel like most people have goal weights anyway. True. Even before... That's so true. Like, even my mom had a, always had a goal weight. Of, she, I had a goal weight. Her, I never did anything to get to it. But. Gra- Grandma's goal weight was to be the weight that her driver's license said she was. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So, like, I would just encourage you to maybe rethink the goal weight at That'd all. That'd be a funny goal weight for recovery, too. Is to go back to the... To say how much you want to win. That's funny. Yeah, so I would just really, 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 really hope that you could take a moment and... Hold on. This box just Why popped apart. Why do I so quickly? Because they're so good. They're so so I would encourage eat. you to take a moment and rethink the whole goal weight. I know that you have it, and I know that you're not going to feel sick enough or worthy of recovery, right? Unless you hit that goal weight. Because anorexia makes us feel really bad and wrong and horrible if we're not doing what she tells us to do and what she wants us to do is starve and migrate but starving and migrate is going to kill us because we're not in a famine like she's telling us we are wait up i'm gonna i'm gonna literally get one gift wrapped this whole life (laughs) all right Oh, geez. Okay. okay. Someone's, um, sometimes I feel like I'm progressing, and then I find myself researching calories in restaurants for Right? Two. I know. And that's okay. I used to do that, too, during recovery. We're terrified. I'm terrified. I'm terrified every time I go to a restaurant. I used to be. And so it's perfectly okay to still do that. That doesn't mean you're failing at recovery. That doesn't mean anything other than that day you're stressed and you're scared and you needed a little comfort and... That's the way that you made it through getting to the restaurant. Kudos to you for going to the restaurant. Kudos to you for eating at the restaurant. I mean, there's a lot of positives in that, you know? So maybe you look up the calories, you go to the restaurant and you eat, and then maybe you make a new goal or a new, you know, thing. And the next time that you go, you try not to look and you make a point of trying not to look. But we all do that. Recovery isn't like some straightforward line. If, I mean, if anything, you go back more than you go forward for multiple years before you finally recover. So there's nothing wrong with that. We all do that. I mean, every time I went out with my mom or dad, I remember go- looking up all of the meals and if they didn't have the calories all in line, I was so stressed out. It was rough. So then I would be like searching like my fitness pal or whatever that other one is, that spark one to see if they had that specific restaurant's food in there. Ooh, what do we think of that? Oh, that's fancy. Right, I just got that I at like the... I like your double-sided wrapping paper. I got it at the thrift shop. Hmm. What thrift shop did you go Remind to? Remind me we have to go to Kohl's and pick up something for you. What thrift shop did you go to? Um, Secret Seconds. Oh my god, the one on Broadway? No. Maybe it's not Secret... <laughs> I don't know the name. What? The one that used to be by that sushi place that we used to go to that was really bad. What? Really good, but really bad. Really good sushi food. Sushi Nara? Mm-mm. The one that had really good food that always failed all their inspections. <laughs> oh, Asahi? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. But it's $40. And, that and that same desk is service. only $69 brand new on Walmart. Which one? Or Wayfair or somewhere. Which one? The gold legged one. Oh. I know, but it's 20 bucks cheaper, and we don't have to assemble it when it comes. Oh. True. And it's so cute. Why are we not I in the picture? I have more storage because my back hurts. 
So I'm laying on the couch. Unless you want to change it. Okay, um, well, someone struggling. said, I've been struggling. How do you eat, eat these with a fork? I'm sorry. Frustrating. I mean, I assumed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. I assumed a spoon would be harder. Anyways. I've been struggling with eating a full meal, feeling full, but then also still feeling starving. Thank you. Are you scooting over? Struggling? With eating a full meal. I didn't realize these were Hawaiian rolls. Now I'm kind of disappointed. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And feeling... Yeah, it says it right on the front. Read that again, would you please? My brain. I've been struggling with eating a full meal, feeling full, but then also still feeling starving. Oh my gosh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful because that means you have like the mental hunger is there, you know, an extreme hunger is coming. And that means you're like moving along in recovery and you're going the right direction that you're supposed to go. That's a good thing. Okay. So the thing is, is we have to give into it. I was just saying, I was just talking the other day on that YouTube, I'm eating a day thing <laughs> when I was eating hummus, that there was times when I would eat two full containers of hummus and then I would be so bloated <laughs> and so full, but my brain would be like, oh, there's ice cream in the fridge. Oh, there's this in the fridge. Oh, there's this in the house. I should have some Reese's peanut butter cups. Like, and that's normal. That, that tells me that that like evolutionary component of your eating disorder might be starting to fall away a little bit. And so your real starving body reactions are coming out. And like, if you're really starving, right? What, I did all that work so you could be in the frame and then look at it. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I did. Uh, so, yes, it's a wonderful thing and it's actually really good. But here's the thing when people hit this stage, they freak out and they run back. So, the thing is, is you cannot run back now. Now, now is the most important part. This is when people start purging. This is when people start. This is when quasi recovery can really take hold. That's when it took hold for me. Um, <laughs> you're so cute. So anyway, um, I would encourage you to just please keep eating and don't eat to your tummy fullness because if you feel full after a meal, but you are still thinking of food, you should still eat that food. Like if you still want another pizza, another burger, another whatever. I had the best hot dog last night, by the way. This is like the fourth time that you've talked about it. Did <laughs> I? Think it, was so, it was a good hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> because that, you, you know how you get the little cup of fry sauce? Mm -hmm. I poured that in my hot dog too. Ooh. Yeah, it's really good. Very nice. oh, I know, I know, brilliant on my part. But anyway. Yes, I'm very, that's a good sign. I'm very proud. I'm very happy to hear that. That makes me very happy. Um, I mean, unless other things are going on that I don't know about. That's a pretty good sign that you are on the way and that your hunger is starting to come back. And it's it's going to overlap for a while, that mental hunger I and that fullness. That fabric. Oh, let me, I'm trying to hurry. There we go. That's like similar to styrofoam. Yeah, it really is. All right. It's terrible. I just don't want... <laughs> I'm just kidding, it looks good. Literal gas mask in a box. What did you get your nephew to show? Oh my god, I'm a gas mask. Regulation. Oh, you were asking me. I was like, what? Um, someone said, it feels like I'm always mentally hungry. Also, okay. Someone said we should like tell them that we're posting this again. Always mentally hungry. I don't know why I sang that. Someone said it looks um, good. I can't rap for the life of this. Oh, I don't have a choice because Lou's not a rapper. You literally just started. Pen. You literally put all of the things Ow. on your side. I know. <laughs> And didn't even give me a chance, and then just started okay, so, like Lou doesn't want to do it. No, I no, I know, but also I I also struggle with sharing. So. I can tell. Um, read that last question again. Oh, they just said it feels like I'm always mentally hungry. Oh, true. That's a good thing. So did I. Once that mental hunger hits, it's like it, it's because your ghrelin is really high right now, and it's going to stay high. You know what? Until your weight restored. 
and then you have to maintain that weight restoration for a long time. I hate to tell you that. A lot of people think like, oh, I got to my weight I was before. Oh, I'm weight restored, which you don't know if you're weight restored. Only your body knows if you're weight restored. But a lot of people think that means, boom, mental hunger is going to go away and all of that. And that is not the case. It stays until it is convinced that you are not in famine Why aren't anymore. those stickers? Um, because I'm running out of stickers and I just saw this in the bottom of the thing and I was like, hey, I'm going to go with it. <laughs> See, I don't have very many sticker ones left, and then I wrote the wrong. Yes. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> it's a mess. Okay, back to the noodles. Um, someone said thank you guys for all that you do. You are such a big help for a lot of people. I appreciate you so much. I'm sorry, but who eats these with a fork? I thought they would just fall. Are you off. eating with a fork? Yes, I because I thought they just f would fall off of a spoon. Do they stay on a spoon? I don't know. I legitimately have not had buttery noodles like since I've lived here. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. I eat my mac and cheese with a spoon. Oh, they're very good though, Lou. You did got. Thank you very much. Thanks, I put salt in them. You did? Yes. Because mm. uh, you <laughs> may be white, but I am not. Look at I, I have it. I have the buttery noodles salt. up there between your paintings. I want to smack them so bad. <laughs> Just. <laughs> Anyways. Um, someone said, when do I give in to my mental hunger? I get scared that I'm binging and will lose control. Right now. Mm -hmm. I'm not sushi. Yeah. So, where's my disc after? Oh, there. <laughs> <laughs> so, ooh, what is that? Oh, look what I got out of that, guys. It's an... It's I a, love how they're like freeze dry. It's a, <laughs> it's, they're two stuffed animals, like a Minecraft and an Enderman. <laughs> I hope she's not on our live down there. They literally look um, like look how skinny they are. Fish. <laughs> um, and I'm tempted to wrap them this way, actually. No, I want to open them up and see what they look like. All right. Um. So anyway, I'm so sorry, but I need to share the scissors. Oh. Lost. Oh, sorry. <laughs> are you serious? Are they in here? Okay, there. So you need to give in to your mental hunger every single time you feel it. This and I like, know... This one looks like a dick. <laughs> you have the mind of a 12-year-old. I don't even know how old that would be. I don't think five-year-olds are walking around saying The man at the convenience store said I need to watch The Office movie. Oh my god, movie. they're inflated. The Office There's Christmas movie? movie. But it's not The Office. It's not with... I don't think... Anyway. <laughs> okay. Anyway, you need to give in to your mental hunger now. And I know oh, you're terrified. And here's what you're terrified of. You're oh terrified. <laughs> it literally looks like a dick. Can we call it a penis, not a dick? Please? No. Why? <laughs> I am horrified. <laughs> He's supposed to have purple eyes. Okay, let's put these in her stocking oh, instead eye. of wrapping them. Oh, so it's gonna love this thing. I need my this chart. This is gonna this be Oso's new favorite toy. I don't know where it is. I'll just write it on. Can I have these? I love this <laughs> thing. <laughs> my cats would love it. Okay, let me I'm trying to play question. with Loki more. Okay, go ahead. Right. So, someone said creepy. Ha ha ha. Extremely creepy. It's a creeper. Isn't it? <laughs> Literally, I just watched the video because it has a little bit of delay, and I'm just like shaking <laughs> it violently. <laughs> okay. So here's what you're afraid of. What you're afraid of is if you give in to mental hunger, you're going to eat forever and all the time. And I know this isn't what you want to hear, but you are going to eat all the time. Okay, it won't be forever, but it will be for a very long time, longer than you're comfortable with and constant. And that's because you're starving. Your body, like, I hate when people say, that's because you've been restricting or that's because you've been, like, not eating, not getting enough energy. You've been starving, like, starvation. Like, when you see those videos on TV of people having their starving bodies and they're dying of famine. That's what you're doing to yourself. Same thing. Your body's starving. So, when you start getting that mental hunger and when you start wanting to feed yourself... And you do start feeding yourself and your body feels that food coming in, right? And it's like, wait, maybe we're not in a famine anymore. Maybe we're not, not in a famine and we're around food. Well, of course, your instincts are going to take over and they're going to want to eat nonstop because you're starving. Literally, you're starving. So 
your fear is going to happen. You're like, I'm afraid to give in to mental hunger because I'm afraid I'm going to want to eat all the time. Well, you are. You are going to want. That's why you have mental hunger is because you are going to want to eat all the time. It's called extreme hunger. You're going to get it. It's going to happen. But if you can give into it consistently and regularly and let your body grow to where it needs to be to your set point, mm-hmm. it will go away. What it, it won't go away if you give in a little run back to restriction, give in a little run back to restriction. If you do that, you're just raising your set point the way that people who go on yo-yo diets are raising their set point over time. And that's how they end up in very large bodies, right? Because they're raising their set point over time by yo-yo dieting, going restricting, gaining, restricting, gaining. So that's what's happening. You're going up and up and up. Well, the same thing can happen when you have an eating disorder and you're restricting and then you're trying to give into your hunger and then you're going back and you're going back. And that truthfully is one of the fears that made me just finally say, forget it. I'm not restricting anymore. I'm just giving in. But it is, I, I mean, I just want to be truthful with you and honest. I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and lie and say, oh, don't worry. It won't happen. You're not going to get it. You know, you're not going to, you're not going to go crazy. You're not going to feel like you're binging. You are going to feel like you're binging. We all feel like we're binging. We all feel like we're going to develop binge eating disorder. You're going to go from anorexia to binge eating disorder. That's your worst fear. That's what we all think is going to happen. That's not what's going to happen. What's going to happen is you're going to eat a lot of food. You're going to eat a lot of food for a while. It's going to taste good. It's going to taste wonderful. Then you're going to get sick of it. Then you're going to not want to eat it and eat it mechanically, but you have to keep eating it. You have to eat it all day, every day, every time your brain wants it, let it have it. And then over time, when you raise your set point, what even, what even is that? It's a charger that has like oh a crocheted vine on it. That is so cute. Anyway. That's what I have to say about that. I really feel passionate about that. I hate when people try to like pussy. About all this stuff. I do, but I hate when people try to pussyfoot around it and say, "Oh, it probably won't happen to you. You're not gonna." Yes, it is gonna happen to you. You're gonna feel like you're binging. It's gonna be like horrific and horrifying because the anorexia makes you feel horrible when you eat. But that doesn't mean you don't have to do it. You still have to do it. Period. Period. My this these are getting a little bit cold, <laughs> <laughs> and so the butter on the bottom is like literally starting okay. to burn. Someone said, do you guys have any tips for not feeling guilty after eating an extra snack? Mm. You mean like eating those onions in a bowl of noodles? <laughs> um, so we're putting that in the stocking? Yes, there's no way to Guys, I bought this simply because I bought <laughs> Does it have any dairy in it? No, I don't think so. Wait, like to give yourself or to eat? your stocking. To give yourself or to eat? Oh, sugar cookie? Put it in your stocking and do that. I'm excited for it. Okay. I just opened it before. This is stocking stuff too. Okay, for who? For me? So, for me? I mean, like, what I want. Okay, all this is stocking stuff. Okay. So, I think it's all going to go to me. Can, I'm get, can I have one of these, please? If, it, if you, the rest goes in yours, stocking, then that one goes in. Okay. <laughs> so, first of all, please know that you're going to feel guilty when you eat, and that's normal. And that's because your eating disorder has switched your hormones in such a way that makes you feel wrong when you eat, and it makes you feel good when you don't. That's how anorexia gets you to migrate. Because if you didn't feel that way, you would hunker down and be eating little grass that was growing, right? But anorexia makes you feel better and stronger and more adept and more focused when we don't eat and when we start. That's how it get, they get us to migrate and to feel good. That's why we hallucinate fat stores on our body, okay? And so when we do eat, we feel guilty because if we're migrating and we see a few berries and we stop to pick them and eat them, that is a waste of our time that we should keep going until we hit the bonus land, right? The bonus the round. The bonus round. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course we're going to feel guilty when we eat. That You just have to know that that's part of anorexia and that's normal. It's like some people have, I don't know, they have to take chemotherapy or dialysis. They have to take medications with side effects that maybe Aspirin. make them like some side effects like <laughs> 
Eva's had to take medication that's made her like combative and you know very like aggressive and mine's made me want to kill myself right so like sometimes you have to take medications they give you horrible side effects the medication for you is food and the side effect is feeling shitty and guilty after you eat it but that doesn't mean you can stop taking your medicine and stop eating your food you still need to eat it and you still need to eat it regularly and it's like dose after dose after dose and sometimes you need to eat extra and the more you eat the less it's like the more you eat now the less length of time you have to go through this so honestly the fact that you ate an extra snack you're going to feel guilty but in the long run it's going to get you through quicker so there's nothing there's nothing that's going to reduce that guilt you are going to feel guilty but please just remind yourself that that's not you. Your body's so thankful that you're giving it food and you're feeding it. That's your eating disorder sending you false information. That is fake information. If you, had, if you had schizophrenia and you were having like paranoid delusions, right? That somebody in your own family was out to kill you or after you. That would be fake information that your brain was feeding you. Well, this feeling guilty and feeling wrong for eating, that's fake information that your mind and your body is sending you. So you have to. Oh, already? Are you serious? I need the charger. I'm gonna go get a charger. Okay, and then we have a long question that I need you to pay attention to. Okay. Help me out. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so stupid. <laughs> Maybe you should have bought the charger. Is it this one? Oh my gosh, look! <laughs> what? <laughs> I love watching like the replays after we do funny <laughs> stuff on my phone. That's funny stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hi guys, it's just me. I'm eating Krabby Patty gummies because they're really good. But they make my teeth hurt because sugar makes my teeth hurt. But that's okay because I'm still gonna eat them. But Thank you. I don't put the Papa likes my ears. Hey, shh, I'm talking to them. Sorry. About very serious things. Oh, sorry. No, I can't talk to them anymore. Okay, thanks a lot. Anyways. Okay. Okay, you ready to pay attention? Yeah. <laughs> What's my plan? I don't know what my plan is. We'll have a plan. I never have a plan. All right. Yes, I'm ready. Okay. They said this name is so funny. When I read your question now, I'm not allowed to say names because we're posting this to YouTube. But look at this look at this thing. I think it's really funny. Oh my god. Anyway. Of course you would think that was funny. Thanks. So they said, did you feel like you are deep down craving some love slash attention from your loved ones? Like that's my inner child screaming because I was forced to grow up very young. And I didn't get, like, helping me with food and eating with me, etc. And I feel bad because my mom has her own life. But I feel like I'm already 20 years old, so I'm grown technically. But deep down, I still want my mom's care. You mean as far as that's why you got your eating disorder? Um, I think so. No. No. No, no, no. Maybe not. Correct me if I'm wrong. You have your eating disorder because you... We're giving your body less energy than it took to survive. Now, could you have started to eat less because those things were happening in your life and then that turned on the genetic component? Absolutely. Many people lose weight for different reasons. You might have been depressed, upset, anxiety ridden. Like, I don't know. I know there's a YouTuber, Tabitha Farrar. She had a wonderful family. She always talks about like this. Her. I don't know. I love her. Oh, which one is the one we don't like anymore? I don't know if I should advertise that. Why? Recovery cup, I don't like. What, are they gonna come sue you? No, I don't like anybody skinny. Tabitha Farr's kinda skinny, but she's Is a... she the, who's the all in lady? Is that Stephanie Buttermore? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, who got who's skinny? I did unfollow her. Yeah, Stephanie Buttermore is triggering for me anymore. I can't open this, I'm I loved, freak out. I loved her account when she was in a bigger body. And then all of a sudden it was like, wait a minute, what happened? I don't like it, it makes me feel bad about myself, I'm out. But anyway. So Tabitha Farr talks about in her book um, that she was a horse rider and she just simply had to lose five, a horse girl. She had to lose five pounds in order to ride a specific horse that she wanted to, and she could have cared less about her weight. 
but that triggered her eating disorder and she never cared about her weight. Put this chocolate never in your bag. <laughs> anyway, did you see how long it took me to get those last little? Yes, it did. With a fork. Mm. So, no, that's not why you have your eating disorder. That's not what started your eating disorder. Going into energy deficit is. Could it be that this is giving you some sort of affirmation from your mom or your family or some sort of like look at me type of um, coping mechanism Does now? That like now that it started, that's making it harder for you to seek recovery. Sure, sure, that could be happening. But also, is that a like me? No. It's also. Is population? No, I mean, I was going to put the whole thing in yours, like package it all. Oh. Yeah, but that's. Well, I thought it would be harder to put in the stocking that way. Your stocking's huge. If we Not really. It. It's not that big. So, anyway, I hope that made sense to you. Um, that you absolutely um, I did not. I need to stretch my legs out. You're like, you are driving me. It's all right. I love you. You're my big baby. So, yeah, you, that's not what caused it. Oh, my God, they're half red, half green. That is so cute. That's not what caused I've been giving those at school this week. Kids love those. Really? I do really like them. That is not what's causing the eating disorder. But absolutely, the fact that you have that, if, it's, if you're getting some sort of support in the way of having it, it could, of course, be causing you to not want to recover, you know? Yep. Yep. You, 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 you. I think I'm gonna fold these in half, maybe. Okay. Let's try this. I'm gonna wrap a gift for Lou now. Ooh, what are you gonna wrap? Hand me the scissors and maybe you'll see. <laughs> that was ominous. <laughs> if this gift is for you or for me. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I annoy myself. <laughs> How do I get to the... Wait, all the comments are gone. You know what's funny about that? I really okay. want to drink in my water best behind oh. my Oh, they said, no, I mean right now in recovery. I crave attention and love and I want my mom's support. Yeah. Oh, another one that I remember, somebody said something like, um, when should I stop counting calories in recovery? So, can you explain to me... The one wanting their mom's support. Oh, that was that one that I just that we just talked about. But I don't have the her whole thing or their whole thing. It's on your phone. So I. I'm confused. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to have to check you... your phone for the question because okay. it was deleted on my. So phone. I believe it was. You aren't sure you want to recover because having your eating disorder is you are getting support from your mom, if I'm correct. Um, what? Right? You feel like it's having, basically, some people feel like having an eating disorder ha gives them something positive from others. Right? If you have an eating disorder and you're sick, the other people around you are actually giving you some sort of affirmation that you need in the way of care and soothing. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so that does make total sense, and it's hard to give that up, right? Absolutely hard to give that up, but two things. Oh, that landed in the bowl. I thought that's what you were aiming for. No. Um, that's not really Do fair you to your switch? mother, right? And secondly, what happens when your mother's not around? You have to recover. At some point, you have to recover. And because this is genetic, I would encourage you to look around your family and see who else is in your family and realize that they could just as easily as you get an eating disorder too. And if they do... Why if you, are you doing I'm, 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 I'm... Can you fold your own shirt for that box? What? <laughs> I'm so confused. And if they do, if you do recover, what a gift will that what a gift would that be to those people in your family for when they get an eating disorder to know that it's possible? You know, it is genetic. Do you have any nieces or nephews or, you know, sisters or brothers that could possibly get an eating disorder as well? And by you kind of not recovering and kind of basking in your illness is not going to help them in any way should they come down with an eating disorder. Which is entirely possible. 
Thank you, Lou. Um, someone else asked when they should stop counting calories in recovery. All right now, today. Today would be a good day to stop counting calories. Today. Today. Right now. Today. Today. We're going to stop. to learn how to make oven roasted veggies. We're going to stop the, the counting of calories today. But here's the thing. You can't just stop. That's, that's a... I would love to think that you could just stop, but that's not how that works. Your brain is still going to continue to count calories long after you decide to stop. So... If you choose today to start trying to stop, that would be a wonderful start, you know? And you could go in your kitchen and you can black out all the calories on all your containers. Why and say that? <laughs> my brain, I think you're just going to say black out. Just go black out in your out. kitchen. I used to black out my kitchen when I would eat in the middle of the night. Yeah. I like your just small yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I mean... There is no right time. Hopefully, if you're asking that question, it means you're feeling as though you want to tackle calorie counting. Usually by the time we're asking that question, we've been thinking about it. The fact that you're thinking about it tells me that you're sick of counting those calories. That's amazing that you're sick of counting those calories because it gets exhausting. What is it? That's trash. So stop counting calories today. And by stop counting, I mean... When you go to the grocery store and you go to pick up that container to look on the back, don't do it. If you can't buy that without looking, then you can't buy that. But don't look at the calories. Start there. <gasps> Black out the calories on everything in your kitchen. What? I found a sweater on Facebook Marketplace um, that's $10 for a men's extra large and it's fuzzy in the sleeves. Stop being For $10. Wow. It's from Costco. It's one of the Costco coats. But you've never been coats that are fuzzy in the sleeve. You need to get in this thing. What is this? Ah! What is Kinder? Is it just chocolate? It's Tinder for people who like to eat. What? Nothing. Okay. You haven't heard of Kinder chocolate? I I have. I just have never really been interested in what it is. I don't really like chocolate that much, I guess. Oh, that lady you don't like said that white chocolate is better than all the chocolates. What lady do I like? She said dark chocolate is the worst. The one you were stalking on Instagram. Oh my god. Do we, do we have to tell the world I'm stalking someone on Instagram? Uh, we can, but we don't have to tell them who it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's wrap this. Know. You're going to have to move your feet a little bit. No. I can't <laughs> I get stressed out when my legs are cramped. I keep moving over and move your feet. All right. So I hope that helps. I mean, I'm sure you knew I was going to say stop counting calories today, and I know it's hard, and it took me probably a full year to actually stop counting calories. Because even after I decided to stop counting calories, my brain kept counting calories. Oh my god. Look, I'm going to just pour all of these out of here because that was only one pack. You keep ripping the packages of things. <laughs> because I feel like it's going to be easier to put them in the stocking that way. Um, so we said, is it possible to recover alone? Yep, absolutely. I mean, Tina's here. Hi, Tina. Hi, Tina. I would encourage you, if you're recovering alone, to come to places like this. Um, also, maybe get the book by Tabitha Farrar. She has a few books. She has one called Love Fat, where she literally recounts her eating disorder and her recovery that she did alone. Um, she... What are these? Sweet cream topped with cocoa wafer bites? I'm putting one in my... I've never had that before. Exciting. So, I would encourage you to maybe get some books like that. She also has a book called, like, Rehabilitate, Rewire, Recover. Um, that was really good that, that I also read. And then she has a new one about... Can you have um, these? I love those. Yes. In fact, I brought a couple little ones home. In fact, I got an oat milk steamer earlier, and it didn't have enough sweetener, so I melted an entire candy cane in it. But I dipped the candy cane in it, and I lifted it up. It was like a battery acid. It just was gone. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not. It was battery acid? Yeah, it was weird. So anyway, you absolutely can recover alone. A lot oh. of people do it. You know, you just have to be willing to sit with the scary feelings, the fear, the guilt, you have to be willing to eat when you don't feel like eating and eat when your brain wants to eat, but your body's telling you not to, you know? 
and you can DM me. You can message me on any like one of the platforms that I'm on. Absolutely. This gift is for Lulu. Someone's doing a multi-part question, so I have to wait for them to finish. Oh, okay. I told myself that if anybody invited me to... Careful what you say right now. <laughs> what? Be careful how you end that sentence. Why? I don't know. Okay, well... Um, anyway, I was telling myself that if someone were to ask me to hang out, I would have to say yes, and I would not be able to say no. And the one person that asked me to hang out, I was like, oh my gosh, yes, I would love to. I actually would not love to. I would love to stay home, but I know I have to. But I said, yes, I would love to. And then they fucking ghosted me. Oh, Mia. And I'm so mad. I'm sorry, but it was actually what you wanted, right? Yeah, but... Well, maybe they'd have anxiety like you, you know? Okay. Um, Can we put your own name tag on that? What are you going to say? To who? To me? To who? Yeah, someone sent a rose. Thank you. Uh, someone said, when I stopped counting calories, I got anxiety, and I started eating a little bit less because I was scared of eating more, so I got back to count them. Okay, well, I want you to know that, first of all, that might happen. Where's the... And I can remember okay. feeling the same way. But also... What did you do the pen? When you're counting calories... No, 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 do the Why? Real, do the real name tag. Oh, I forgot you had those. Oh, right. well. They're when literally you're, crushed in there. <laughs> <laughs> when you're counting calories and you have anorexia, we all know you're counting too high. You are over-exaggerating every calorie you eat. So you're actually eating a lot less than you thought calorie-wise. So then if you stop counting calories and you're eating even a little less, you're probably having what you thought you were having prior when you were counting. So... It's perfectly normal to go through a phase after you try not to count calories where you feel like you need to overcompensate because we're really scared. We are. But also, if you need to count calories right now to get in enough food, that's okay too. But what I would encourage you to do if you can't stop counting calories, when my brain was like really counting calories and I was consistently trying to stop, but my brain, I would lay in bed at night and as soon as it would hit the pillow, it would be like, 35, 40, 60, 80. I was just like calculating everything I had through the day, right down to every vitamin and every mint or whatever. And instead of counting calories to a low number, I started trying to at least meet a number. So instead of being like, I have to be under XX calories, I was making a goal of, I have to be at least this many calories or I'm going back in that kitchen and I'm getting food. Or I would keep a bowl of granola bars at the side of my bed and be like, I'm going to eat some of that chocolate and granola bars until I've hit that. So like, if you feel like you have to count calories or your brain is just naturally counting them like mine was, even when you were trying to stop, try to at least change the way you're counting them. Instead of trying to meet some arbitrary number that's low, like if you're, if you're say you're trying to make 800 calories, which I'm just picking out of the blue because we all need, know we need at least 2,500 calories. But say you're, and then you hit 750, you're like, oh yes, I made it, I'm under. That's not the kind of goal we're making. We're making a goal where you have to hit over. So you'd be like, I my goal was like over 2,000 when I was doing that. I was still really sick and not well, but I knew I needed over 2,000 calories. And at that point, I actually needed probably more like 3,000 calories. But if I didn't hit at least 2,000, I was in that kitchen, I was eating those granola bars, I had to get over that magical number. And that's one of the things I did until my calorie count, counting slowed down. Because for so long when you're counting calories, your goal is to be under, to be under, to be less than, to be less than. Well, we need to switch that in our brain. We need to start thinking about it in terms of we need to get more than that many calories. Our goal needs to be higher than that number of calories. You're dissociating. That's okay. I actually was thinking about how it's actually light outside. Because it's like always dark outside. Oh, it is light outside. And here we are in a dark room. Yeah, <laughs> Okay, here's the shirt that I got. And I know um, I know people get mad when we talk calories, and I really don't care. We gotta get used to talking calories. What the hell? Someone said my Why brain has been happen? counting calories every time I eat something. Can that stop? I got this from my mother. 
says I'd rather be on TikTok because honestly, my mom is on the recipe side of TikTok and it is. Yeah, she's on Food Talk. She is on Food Talk. She loves it. I was on there for a while. Anyway, will your counting calories go away if you fight it? Is that the question? Oh my god, that'd be nice if I know. Um, I do always listen the second time. So my brain has been counting calories every time I eat oh, something. Yeah. That stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely that can stop. Because that you were me. You were me. I was a calculator. Like and I've always had one of those calculator kind of brains. Like even my when I went to see Jody, my childhood my friend. My brain immediately went to why are you going to see Jody Arias? <laughs> When I went to see my childhood friend, she was saying that she can remember when I was young and I would look at like a digital clock and just like make math equations with all the numbers. I'd be like this plus this divided by this and using those numbers. Like I'm very number oriented, huh? That's so stupid. It is not stupid. (laughs) Oh my gosh. So anyway, counting calories just came natural to me. My brain just did it. Like I loved it. It made me feel safe. It made me feel good. I mean, I can remember asking my dietitian, how do I know if I'm even doing okay unless I count calories? How, how, how do people, I could not wrap my head, I could not wrap my head around anybody. What are we doing? Do you use heat protectant? Oh my God, you're going to dog on my hair right now? <laughs> no, I don't, I'm out. Hmm. And okay, the one I have is like. Some. You should try oh. mine. I actually have a lot of mine, and I do really like it, because I have to pour oh. it into a little squeeze bottle, because my big squeeze okay. bottle is broken. Number one, you're brutal. Number two, How back to counter <laughs> Um. Anyway. So at least, at least I shave have, your head. At least I have hair now. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen what I've done to my hair. Okay. Anyway. Abs. <laughs> Why does that look like a... Oh, there we go. <laughs> anyway I was that way my brain would automatically count I would put something in my mouth and my brain would already be counting thank you for those little flowers oh my gosh look how cute they are oh they remind oh, me of my little face them. mask what? anyway I have a face mask with those little flowers on I was wearing it today oh I thought you meant skincare face mask no but any anyway so I know what it's like to put food in your mouth by the way. and to what? It's 253. Oh. We're going to leave at like 310. Okay. Okay. We have to go at 310 in like 20 minutes because we have to get our booster shots. So you can't be ranting on we, about every question. No, because we, pick it up. we both remembered making these appointments for 545. <laughs> and then today we both looked in our email and we're like, why are they at 345? <laughs> right? Yeah. I remember being that late too. But anywho, maybe we'll go. Maybe we'll go live mid midweek this Hold week. Hold on. Hold on a second. So anyway, the, I have my thing in my phone at 5:50 p.m. I wrote it stuff? down in my schedule. Yes, at 5:50. Maybe you should step out and call Walgreens and no, see. No, because the email they sent me said 3:30. I think you wanted to do it earlier for some reason, for like ever or something. Do you think we were supposed to go yesterday? No. Okay. Anyway. Actually, let me check. Oh no. <laughs> Today's Saturday? Yeah. Today's the 18th? I don't okay, know. yes it is. Okay. Oh All right. It's a little bit scary. So anyway, the answer to your question is absolutely. It takes a long time. Your brain is just going to calculate it. Let it. Let it calculate it. Go ahead. It's not going to hurt you. But have someone, like I had Lou, come over and black out all the calories off all your food at home. When you buy something with a label, I used to sit in the Walmart parking lot and take the labels off of, like, my boost. That was back when you went into stores. My boost drinks. Yeah, it was. And just pull all the labels off and say they were, like, little white. Remember Pop asked me, what are these little white bottles in the fridge? (laughs) Yeah, so... If my brain could lose that information, so can yours. Oh my gosh, someone gave us little kitties that look like kitties. I missed it. Was it kitties? I don't know. That was the cutest thing. Someone I've ever said seen. we have we've got to pick it up, Mom. Okay, I'm someone sorry. Someone said ahead. my BMI tells me I need X amount of calories, but Who that does? feels way too low. My BMI. That's your what your BMI is telling you. you I need, think maybe the. I thought you said your grandma. Like the recommended. No, I hear you. I hear you. Okay. I know what you mean. You're, your BMI, you seem whatever. A little confused. No, when you put it in one of those little freaking calculators online, and they're like, you need 
need 1,250 calories. You are severely overweight. First of all, you need to go to Maintenance Phase podcast and listen to their BMI episode um, to learn why we don't listen to BMI. Second of all, I am a... I had to think about how old I am. I'm 50, right? Okay. Yes, because you just had your colonoscopy. <laughs> Thank you for that. I'm, I'm a 50-year-old woman. And so I used to really freak out about that as well because I was always, think, I would see all these what I eat in a days and these young people and everything. And I was like, where are all the people my age? Because I know I should be eating a lot less than everybody else because I'm so old, right? But like, truthfully, I probably eat, I don't know, 2,500 to 3,000 calories. I eat a lot of junk. I do. I that. honestly have, I have no idea how much I eat in a day. That would be my guesstimate to what I eat. And I oh, maintain, I okay? So here's the trick about BMI and your calories. Everybody's body is so different based on your genetics. Just like everyone's height is different and everybody's weight is different, everybody's genetics are so different that your amount of calories you need, okay? Oh, somebody gave me little roses. Look, I'm Mom, we've got to oh, stay I'm sorry. Stay so, I'm sorry. Okay. So here's the thing about that. Everybody's body is so, so different. The calories that you need at, 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 for all of you, the calories you need is how many calories you eat when you eat without restriction. You eat everything you want. If you want pancakes, oh, I want my sour ropes in the other room. If you eat sour ropes, if you eat like junk food, if you eat fruit, you just eat what you want to eat every day, all day, okay? And you do that over time, over years. And in a year or so, after your eating disorder starts settling down because it's starting to trust you, if you were to count your calories on one of those days for a month and average that out, that's how many calories you need. It's like Lou is a normal eater. They've been a normal eater for quite a while, right? So if we were to count Lou's calories every day for a month and then average them by 30, whatever, we I might- I wonder what it would be. I'm like genuinely curious. We might I, have, get, I don't have the first idea. We might get an estimate of what her, a rough estimate of what her body there. needs there. But also, <laughs> It changes on if the weather's cold, they might need more. If it's hot, if you I'm might depressed. sweat and they need more. Yes, and, and your energy and what yeah. medications you're taking. So, like, that's the only way to find out what your body really needs. And so the fact that you have an eating disorder, first of all, throws all that out the window because you need tons more than someone else needs for a long time longer than you would think. So I was eating double probably my maintenance and calories for months, 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 probably a year before it finally started mellowing out a little bit. So I hope that makes sense. And if not, you're welcome to like, message me on wherever. I try to answer all my like messages. Anyway, um, someone else said, I think I have this sort of eating, not a full-blown ED. I still want to see a dietitian, but I feel like a fraud, LOL. Oh my gosh, you're not a fraud, first of all, and disordered eating. I mean, what is the difference between disordered eating and an ED? I, I don't know. A lot of us probably would say we just had disordered eating or an Can ED. Can people have and a it, disordered eating without getting that trigger? That like oh, yeah. We live in diet trigger. culture. Absolutely. So they're still having disordered eating without yeah. an eating disorder. Yeah. Yes, you absolutely can. And it doesn't matter. I remember my dietitian saying that she welcomed people that wanted to come in and talk about these things. So like if you just want to go in because you're curious and ask, make a first appointment and be like, hey, I'm just curious because this is how I'm feeling, but I really don't feel sick enough, which is also, you know, an eating disorder kind of thing to not feel sick enough. So I would encourage you to go see a dietitian and just be inquisitive and just ask. And I guarantee you oh, they'll you be so happy that you came in. I know every time I say curious, and this is about to kick me in the face, so <laughs> I changed true. it to inquisitive. Someone else said, my mom is growing frustrated because I'm not recovering fast enough and it's making me feel guilty. I know it's because she's scared for me, but I really am trying. <laughs> I'm so sorry to giggle at that. Yeah, that but, was kind of rude. I'm sorry, but the average age, the average length of time it takes to somebody to recover from an eating disorder is like seven years. And that's because you have flipped that switch in your brain and you have flipped all those hormones. Once that happens, your hormones, whoop. What if I just dislocate my knees at the same time? This is what we're going to talk about when this we only have 10 minutes to screen. Right yes. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, please, I encourage you to, number one, um, Dr. Geisinger has some wonderful things that you can give 
to print out for your mother. And two, if you'd like to send me like a, a DM or a message or something, um, you can link over to my Instagram and I think anyone's allowed to like message me there. I know here's just who you follow or something. Um, and, but I have this wonderful pamphlet that I have Someone made. Someone said, that I just would... sent roses. I don't know why. <laughs> oh, thank you. I love it. Um, but I made a pamphlet that describes all the hormonal changes that happen in your body that make you feel the way that you do. And so once your horm hormones and neurotransmitters have flipped that way, it takes a long, long time to get them back because now you have to prove to your body you're not in a famine anymore. And so it's hard for your mom, of course it is. It's hard for your loved ones and it takes so long and they don't understand. I mean, they just, if you don't have it, you can't possibly. The closest person to anyone that might understand is probably Lou, but I don't think anyone else in my family quite what? grasps. It's okay, you are, it's okay. How, how people without EDs can understand what it's like and how long it takes. I equate it a lot to like social anxiety especially when you're talking about like facing your biggest fear like when you're eating because like when I go to hang out with someone like it feels like my body is shutting down yeah yeah like it feels like I can't do anything like that and that's scary. like it's terrifying it's like my biggest fear and so like I kind of equate it to like that to like help me understand I guess because that's probably like one of my biggest fears yeah so maybe you could try to put it to your family kind of in those kind of terms like what if they were facing their biggest fear every single day only it's stuck in your brain and your brain is switched in that famine position right you can't control how long it takes for that to switch off that's just going to happen on its own so all you can do is just keep trying to fight every day and maybe try to find those really good resources i know there's also like the feast program out there that helps families i'm not familiar with Someone said, how long did it take until you stopped gaining weight? Um, they said, because I have lost lots of weight and people keep telling me to stay like that and now I'm scared to gain weight. Mm. That's terrifying. Why would anybody want you to stay skinny? That's awful. I said that's terrifying. <laughs> it's terrifying. I would be so <laughs> sad if my family or people around me weren't willing to watch me get healthier and gain the weight. Um, but... I guess the question was how long did it take me to gain weight and I gained weight steadily over the course of three years so I would gain and then I would I gained and then I would plateau and I'm talking like three pounds because <laughs> in the beginning it was tough to gain I was so scared so I'd like gain three pounds and then freak out and pause but I just made a promise to myself that I wouldn't go back I would hold steady and then when I felt safe I would gain another couple pounds and then I would stop and then I just did that for like so long and then there came this point of time, maybe it was during the extreme hunger time, I don't know, that I just kind of like jumped up like five, ten pounds at a time, I just like jumped up a bunch, <laughs> and then and then was terrified, and then none of my clothes fit, and then kind of made another jump. So it, I mean, I probably gained the last little bit like, I don't know, a year ago or so, so maybe two and a half years of solid gaining, little by little. Gains. But it does stop. I mean, I thought I was going to gain forever. Of course, we all think we're going to gain forever, just like I thought I was going to get binge eating disorder. But it does stop. But it stops at your set point, which might not be the weight you want to be. But you know what? You're going to be that weight or you're going to have an eating disorder. Those are your two choices. Someone said, are you a teacher and what do you teach? Um, I work in special ed at a school. So I have little like groups of kids for different things, all the way from like, math and reading but also social emotional stuff and i just took a class last week on how to Potty training how to restrain little children and what to do if they pull your hair <laughs> okay um someone said thank you so much for what you do um someone said do you have to gain weight in recovery guys i wrapped a total of three gifts but that's okay um i thought i was only gonna it's wrap one. more than you more than you did when we did the homeless people what was that too. question you have to gain weight in recovery yeah you have to gain weight you have to gain a lot of weight you have to gain a shit ton of weight because the whole reason you have an eating disorder is because you weren't giving your body the energy that it needs you might gain a bunch and then settle back down a little bit but your weight is heritable just like your height Okay, so your size is genetic based on family and what your body's like and all those kind of things, just like your height is heritable. You can't change how tall you are, just like 
you can't change the size of your body, okay? So when you do manipulate the size of your body, it comes at the price of either restricting for the rest of your life if you don't have an eating disorder or having an eating disorder, right? It's kind of like your shoe, your feet are always, you know, gonna grow the size they were meant to be, but that didn't stop some people from binding their feet to make them smaller. That doesn't make it a good thing, just like restricting our food and giving ourselves eating disorders, you know, just to make our... Okay, I'm sorry, that rant is over. Um, yes, you have to gain weight, and you probably have to gain a lot more than you're comfortable with, and it's going to suck, and it's going to be horrible. I'm not going to lie to you. You have so many good questions. It's going to be really the worst, worst, left. worst thing that you've ever done. Um, someone said, how can you overcome the fear of gaining weight? Oh, my God, overcome the fear of it? You just have to come to terms with the fact that it's that or have an eating disorder. And so, do you want your eating disorder? Do you want to keep that eating disorder? Because I know you don't, right? Or you wouldn't be here because it's miserable. You're alone. You can't eat. You, you want those pancakes. I know you want a donut. Like, you, and, and you don't just want those foods. You want them peacefully without that voice in your head, right? Oh my but God. you also want to stay that weight because anorexia is telling you to. But the only way to turn that switch off is to gain the weight. But here's what you have to put your faith in. When you gain the weight and your set point rises and you get to your set point weight, that genetic switch is going to turn off and then it's going to feel okay to be that weight. I know you think if I'm not happy now, how am I going to be happy in 30 pounds? But you're not going to feel that way in 30 pounds because your brain is going to be clear of anorexia. I thought you were just laughing back there. I was. Someone said one time I shit my pants in class because I ate too many tacos. Oh, okay. Well, we have three minutes. Do you want to pick one of these two? Okay, well, I won't tell you my shit my pants story now because we don't have time, but okay. I can't even read them, so you can't. <laughs> we only have time for one more question, friends, because we're going to go get our booster shot. <laughs> but because we didn't stay on here two hours like we normally did, I think we should do a midweek live. Okay. Okay, we'll come back on in a couple days in the middle of the week, and we'll do another one. Maybe. I'm going to put this on um, YouTube. YouTube. So when I do put this on YouTube, if you want to like put in the comments below what day of the week and time that if you have a time that you would like us to meet that you could actually come, go ahead and put that on there and we'll do that. Because I have next week off. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, we have two minutes. Okay, two minutes. Someone said, how do you know if you're ready to come off your meal plan? Oh, so that's an interesting question. So how I knew I was ready to come off my meal plan is because it started feeling restricting. I tried so many different meal plans and I could never kind of get the grips of one. Um, and then I started even using a recovery record and I was taking pictures of my food all the time. But then I was doing that Instagram thing that people do where they make beautiful Instagram pictures. But if you look closely, there's really not that many calories in there, but it looked really pretty. And I remember my dietitian and my therapist used to check in on it and be like, oh, that looks so good. Good for you. Yummy. And I'm like, ha ha ha. You don't even know. <laughs> I just made it look so good. But... That's why I stopped because it became more of like a restrictive measure and I, I felt like I couldn't eat what I wanted to eat while on it. So if you're on a meal plan and you get to the point where you feel like it's holding you back from eating something that you really want to eat, like if your meal plan doesn't have donuts and you really want donuts and you know that about yourself, it's time to kind of stop and branch out from your meal plan. Um, if you don't feel safe that you can eat that much, and you need to stay on your meal plan, oh, the no. only time you Someone branch out from your meal plan, wipe them out. Don't say that because we're gonna make a YouTube video tomorrow. But also, I'm I do so have scared. a good the new Sandra Bullock movies out on Netflix, and I want to watch that tomorrow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Is that our last question? Yes. Okay, friends, that's our last question. Um, we're gonna go get our booster shot. Thank you so much for coming. I feel bad. I feel like we didn't answer a couple. I'm super sorry. I normally answer every question. Um, if you want to like go below my most recent TikTok video and ask it there, I promise I will get to it. I go in order of the videos and I just try to answer them all because I feel like anybody out there that has a question about this stuff deserves to have it answered. Um, but we love you and will you come back in a couple days with us? No. Okay, well, <laughs> yes, she will. She will. Will you come back? I won't if you keep misgendering me. They will. They will. I'll, I'll feed you for rare Rocher. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to do a 
a YouTube video tomorrow, make a gingerbread house, maybe answer a question or two for a little YouTube video, and then we'll do a live in a couple days again. Um, thank you guys for coming to hang out. I don't know how to turn it off. It's a power button.